I'm Pat Morrison. We have it in our heads in this country that more is better. More stuff, more possessions, bigger house, better cars. But what happens when you challenge that? Or maybe what happens if someone in your family challenges that? That's the story of the power of half, one family's decision to stop taking and start giving back. The authors Kevin Salwin and Hannah Salwin, both of them joining me here. Thank you so much. Great to be with you, Pat. Thanks for having us. Kevin Salwin, former reporter for the Wall Street Journal, and Hannah Salwin, who is now how, how many years old? I'm 17. 17. What happened to make the power of half part of your lives happen when you were 14 years old? Your family's living in Atlanta in a very nice historic house, beautiful with an elevator, a couple of million dollars, and you're driving around your own neighborhood one day, and something happens that changes everybody's life in your family. What was that? Um, yes, I, I stopped at a really familiar stoplight when I was in the car with my dad, and um, I looked to my left, and I saw a homeless man um, holding up a sign that said, um, you know, homeless, please help. Um, and then I looked to my right, and I saw a man in a Mercedes coupe. And I kind of toggled back and forth between the haves and the have-nots of the situation. And, and, and your family had already given money to the homeless. You worked for Habitat for Humanity. You carried around little McDonald's cards to have something to give to people. So it's not like you weren't doing something already. Right, right. Um, And then I kind of looked to my dad and I said, you know, Dad, if that man um, in the Mercedes didn't have such a nice car, then the man over here, the homeless man, could have a meal. And then he looked back at me and he said, yeah, but you know, if we didn't have such a nice car, then that man could have a meal. And so that got everybody thinking. Of course, now, Kevin Salwin, you've got a daughter who's 14 years old who's actually speaking to you, which a lot of people don't (laughs) have. But what she was saying got your family to thinking that what you were already doing was not enough. Yeah, well, Hannah brought that anger back to the dinner table. And it was anger really mostly at herself and at our family that we could be doing more, that we should be doing more. And it's funny because Joan, my wife, and I tried to explain, oh, well, we're doing a lot in the community, you know. And each thing we would tell her, we would tell Hannah, we felt like it, 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 either she was overtly or internally eye-rolling at us, you know. Oh, my gosh. Okay, that's the 14-year-old. That's the 14-year-old, <laughs> exactly. And and um, and on finally, we got to the point where, where my wife said, well, you know, almost out of frustration and exasperation, well, what do you want to do? You want to sell the house? And Hannah said, yeah, that's exactly what I want to do. Um, and and from there, you, you did. You, you not only divested yourself of a lot of your possessions. You asked questions about the level at which you were living, the need to, to live there, before you even embarked on the search for what to do with, with the money. Why, why were you asking those questions, Hannah? This is a point time when everybody wants iPods and everybody wants you know the name brand shoes and the Mercedes next to you rather than the sign that you were driving. Right. Well, I think that um, kind of, you know, when I got outraged about um, the injustices in the world, it really um, made our family stop and, and take a look at our lives and realize, you know, maybe that stuff isn't as important as we thought it was. And maybe we should stop um, accumulating and start giving back. And so, Kevin Salwin, your family's really comfortably situated compared to a lot of families. So you were able to do more. How wrenching was it to do that, to say, all right, what ended up being $800,000 that you put into a project we're going to discuss in a few minutes? Yeah, it it was, um, I would put it in the very mild category. And and, and I think an interesting point here is we don't believe as a family that giving needs to be sacrificial. You know, that whole give till it hurts concept is not sustainable. It's not long. It's not it's not something you can do for particularly a long time. And but if you give for joy which is really what was happening within our family, um, it, it is sustainable. And what, what this did for our family is actually did remarkable things for our relationships. Would you like to talk to the people who decided that the power of half was the power in their lives? Call us here to do so. Kevin Salwin and Hannah Salwin at 866-893-5722. You can find out what it is they did with the money. We'll be talking about the project they embarked on in Ghana and how they felt about taking such a big piece of their lives and changing it, downscaling and downsizing to a different lifestyle and a different way of thinking about their lives. 866-893-5722 is the number. You can also tell us what you're thinking on the Pat Morrison page at kpcc.org or call us here and speak to them at 866-893-5722. There's a part in the book where your son, Joseph, kind of realizes finally that this is serious and he, he he's mind boggled. He says, well, we're not doing enough already. You're working for Habitat for Humanity. He's got to give away some of his allowance as you do, Hannah, to charity anyway. And he says, this is not enough. Isn't this a standard response? You can't blame the guy. Not at all. And, and Joseph actually uh, is our family skeptic, and that's a very important role. 
and 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 we we kind of jokingly refer to him as our our own peer review committee. In other words, if we can't get it through Joseph, then we know we haven't thought it through well enough. And um, at each checkpoint, really, Joseph forced us to stop and say, you know, it, why are we doing this? You know, if we're giving this up, are we really doing this for a rational reason, or are we just kind of tossing away, you know, something that we worked hard to earn? So, Hannah, in like after your parents thought you were in bed, did did your brother say, "Why did you bring this up? Why did you do this?" <laughs> you know, you know, he was um, very skeptical. He was, um, but you know, as as the project moved forward, and as you know, um, as we kept talking about it as a family, he kind of he kind of got on board and and really realized, you know, maybe this is for the better. You know, I, maybe I am on board with this project. Now, you you didn't enter this with just a wad of cash to start handing out in $20 bills to people on the street. You, Kevin, because you worked at the Wall Street Journal, had an idea about how futile some aid could be. What, something 2 or 3 billion trillion that's gone to Africa in the last decades with with no real appreciable uh, result, a positive result coming from it. So how did you approach, once you decided to do this as a family, how did you approach what you wanted to do with the money that you had uh, accumulated from this? Yeah, it's very interesting, Pat. We, you know, in our lives, um, we, we focus very hard on how to invest smartly to make more money. But we rarely in, we rarely focus as hard on how to invest smartly to help change other pe- help other people change their own lives, and so that's the process we embarked on. And so what would happen is about every Sunday morning we'd get together as a family and we we'd work through the process and try to figure out where you know what the problems of the world were, how what the solutions were, and where we could make a difference. What was fascinating about it was that we did it by one person, one vote. In other words, the irrational hormonal teenagers had exactly the same say as, you know, the very wise adults, right? And, and each step of the way, we would take a vote. It was a complete democracy. And, and the amazing thing about it, and we describe a lot of this in the book, is, is what it actually did for our family relationships and how it created this new level of trust and empowerment within each member of the family, not just the parents over the adults in a hierarchical situation. And Hannah, of course, your youthful enthusiasm was coupled with your father's, your mother's, your brother's uh, knowledge, skepticism, whatever. Um, How did you think that you were actually going to make a difference in a world that's so big and a place that had absorbed so much money and so much aid for so long? Um, Well, I talk about that um, kind of a lot in the book, but, um, you know, I, I feel like when you think about problems on a more personal level and you have experiences where you're working um, one-on-one and you can really um, understand a person that you're working with, um, it really makes the problem uh, seem a lot smaller and and on a more personal level. So I feel like that was a really big step for me, realizing that um, I shouldn't be thinking of this group of people as the homeless, but I should be thinking of them as individuals. Hannah Salwin and Kevin Salwin, the authors of The Power of Half, and you can talk to them, too, by calling us here at 866-893-5722, which is just what Joe's done. Joe's on the 110 freeway. Thanks for the call, Joe. Thanks for taking my call, Pat. And, you know, first of all, obviously, I think it's commendable that these people are contributing in this way. But I guess to some degree, I'm still kind of wondering, as I have for years, about, you know, this concept of charity. I mean, so often I think we're reminded when billionaires in industry are handing out, you know, what for them represents a few shekels. Uh, the reality, I guess, is that if, you know, depending upon one's means, either it makes absolutely no difference in terms of your lifestyle as a practical matter, or if you are truly contributing and sacrificing as a result, you know, that's great. And what anyone does, hopefully it's significant, but it just seems to me that, that it makes a huge difference whether or not ultimately you 